Now, with that said, we got another topic because record labels are using bots. They are using bots or not. Our record labels using bots. Now, so many people have said that record labels are using bots. We've talked about many people in the industry using bots. However, there was a specific instance, maybe it's been two months ago now, where Atlantic Records, many oh, yeah. artists off of Atlantic Records yeah. were outed, yeah. right? For their bot usage, which I don't think that's fair, man. You know what I mean? Aren't you not supposed to out people, bro? You can't just be putting them. All right, but it wasn't like, it was like a, a little, I saw the Instagram page of this. I watched it from ground zero happen, bro. All I'm saying is yeah. today, <laughs> you can't out people. I feel like people at uh, military music industry and up, we all get it. Nah. Below military and below, bro, like underground, they don't respect it because they don't get it, bro. They're not playing the same game. Yeah. Like, no, nah, I'm, Look, I'll just fuck with y'all, but look. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the artists that suffer. That's the biggest part about it, though. Like, y'all think y'all talking. The artists don't know some of this time, some of these times. But let's, right. let's talk about why we're bringing up this subject. Shout out to K.I. She is a Brandman Network member. If y'all don't know about Brandman Network, well, it's where we put our marketing strategies that we use for many of the artists that we've helped break. Songs that we've helped break over the years, and we put it in there for absolutely free. Go to brandmannetwork.com to get some of that information while we have it free for everybody, but completely free courses and community. Check it out. Now, Kay, what did she say? She said, yo, record labels are using bots to fuel artists' streams. Do you guys think bots are slowly starting to become a secret mandatory tool of the mainstream music industry to ensure high streaming numbers? Yes, I think that is. But Atlantic Records denies using bots for any of its artists. Now, I think there's a complicated question in some ways, right? Because I wouldn't be surprised if Atlantic Records was not using bots. Yeah, like some third-party marketing agency that I write or something. Right. Yeah. But not even just that. Because... I would be would not be surprised if it wasn't even an employee at Atlantic Records. You know what I mean? Yeah. Using the bots. Yeah. Because we already know how many of these record labels use us. Yeah. Right? Just for regular marketing activity. Right? So do they have a bot farm on staff? No. I would be surprised if you could be at the record label and not know. The highest motivation is the artists themselves and their teams. Yeah. There's a lot of artists that don't know that the labels using bots or their manager got some bots you used or their, uh, re not the record label or their marketer might've even been finessing a little bit and did some bots. But there's also, let's be real. There's actually a lot of artists that know yeah. that bots are being used. Yeah. thousand percent. They, they encourage it. Well, they encourage it. Right. They, <laughs> you know, they don't get too deep into the trenches with it, but they have some conversations that, Hey, What's up? Can you get your get your man's that that do what he do? The extra hundred hundred k, right? <laughs> so, and we talked about this in our bot video before. Yeah, but just to add to it, I have another even an, another scenario to make it clear why bots do make sense in the mainstream. So I've talked about how you literally might have a million streams. I'm making up a number, right? But you have a million streams and Unless you get 2 million streams in the next 30 days, you might not have access to the next $100,000 of your budget based on the way the record label is set up and the way they have incentives or just the way they move. Because you have to make things move in a certain period of time. There's people who are going through scenarios like that, right? I know that I was having a conversation with somebody recently who was talking about the way the radio works, right? Okay. And oh, yeah. okay. they had paid the money that they paid to get things popping on radio. Song went pretty damn high, right? Let's just say 40s on the radio charts, the specific one they were talking about. Now, they already said the difference between, let's just say 44 and 40 is a lot of money and a decent amount of um, streams and everything. Point is, they got the song popping on the radio by paying on the radio and getting that marketing visibility. But even radio today, even if it's popping and performing well on radio, says, yo, what that streaming do? So to get it to the next level and take it to the rest of the markets, you can't just have good performance on the radio. You have to be performing on the stream 
or on the streams as well. Otherwise, it's not going to get clear because I guess it's like a quality control check or something. I, I, I don't where it's so it can't be completely gamed musically. I mean, off of money. I don't know. But what would I do in that scenario? Oh, I would say, well, shoot. I just paid for my artist to get here and I just need to pay $30,000 because I already just paid $250,000 to get it to this point <laughs> or however much I paid. Mm. I might as well spend another $30,000 so it can go to the next notch and get paid. Yeah. I'm going to get sent to like a hundred more stations or whatever that number looks like. Yeah. So there's incentives where in the game, there's going to be plenty, plenty of people using some formation of bots always. Because it just doesn't make business sense not to. And just like what marketers do all the time, all, all the time is, yes, we know marketing isn't guaranteed in terms of the result that it can get, but we want to control as many variables as possible to put in the best chance of success. Yeah, that's why, that's, like you said, that's why I get it, bro. It's like, it's about social proving. Like you just said, bro, all these different entities who won't even give you a chance in some aspects because you don't, the numbers don't look a certain part. Yeah. And then, I think what people need to understand, bro, is people have been finessing in music since since the dawn of time, bro. There's, there's a new finesse every music generation. Yeah. Like, my mentor told me about, you know, how they would buy their own CDs at venues and then have the venue owner sign off on it so it would count towards Billboard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they was doing this shit in, like, the, the 90s and 2000s, you know? There's always something, right? What's the difference between an artist doing a show and bringing out 30 of their friends to fill the crowd out so the rest of the crowd thinks they're lit, right? These 30 friends aren't really your, your music fans, you know what I'm saying? But they're convincing everybody else in the venue that you are someone that's worth paying attention to. Theoretically, is that not the same thing that you're trying to do with the boss, right? So I think, at least for me, that's how I've, I've kind of like justified it for myself and, and kind of made it make sense for myself. I'm only ever against bots for artists who do not yet have a marketing infrastructure. Right, because I don't want the artists listening to be like, oh, okay, Shine, Corey, sound like I need to go run some bots. No, but Don Tolliver running bots around his album, it's not the same as Lil Who the Fuck, whatever, running bots around his debut single that you know he put out to his 10 monthly listeners. There's no marketing infrastructure. There's not enough going on around you to where people would believe you, right? And the success of a bot campaign is all about the people believe you. Yes. Right, how blurry is Drake runs bots? We believe it. It makes sense that Drake could have got, you know, two million extra views on this and that. that. That that sounds like something that could happen, right? Versus like if, like I said, Lil Who the Fuck, whatever, you got two million views in a day? Oh, cow, ain't no way, bro. You got a hundred followers on Instagram. Yeah. You got 30 monthly listens on Spotify. How you get two million views on this video in, in a day and a half, right? So it all comes down to believability, right? And and how much of that can you, it actually make sense? We're gonna have somebody on to go deeper into the bot conversation. Yeah, we're so, by the way. Oh, we are? Yeah. Wait, yeah. did y'all use something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have them all uh once we get into the, the the vibe of doing the interviews and everything but i'll say this it's crazy because one of the last conversations i had about but the guy was telling me about some significant shit. people doing some shit right <laughs> and he was telling me how much money people are making off of it right i'm not talking about the people who are doing the bot. i'm talking about the artists because you gotta still think if i give you a thousand dollars to give me X amount of views on YouTube, I'm still getting paid from that, from the content ID. Yeah. And that point, you basically, which is not content ID, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Which is like, that's the part of it that I think regular artists need to understand why the negative bot conversation is up. These labels and people are not against bots because they think the playing field should be fair. They're against it because of what you just said. Yo, these motherfuckers basically robbing us. You know what I'm saying? You're going to pay this guy a thousand dollars. And because that he helped you make an extra 10K from YouTube, an extra 40K from Spotify, you basically robbing these platforms, you know what I'm saying? And bro. that's why they're against him. Not because they want the playing field to be even, bro. Look, <laughs> you get a get a fake artist page or something, just a page just to give ourselves some views. Yeah. <laughs> I even care about the outcome of our brand. Let me just give you just this random page so I can make the money. Yeah. But, I, but, you know, a lot of the companies that are on that level they only deal with very high level clients right because of course you want to keep it hush hush as possible mm -hmm. um and when the people who are paying big are in control of it why even make doesn't even make sense to spread it across a whole bunch of different pages mm -hmm. but john paul also under the brand network comments for this post said no 
Ultimately, bots can be discovered relatively easy. It's a matter of priority on the part of streaming platforms. So he's saying it's not worth doing bots or it's not going to become massive in the the mainstream music industry. The problem is artists want to rely on algorithms to grow their fan bases. I understand the practicality and the appeal of that, but at this stage, the most important thing to focus on is creating better content and better music. Yes, that stage, that stage, proving the product does still work, so what's the point of focusing on something you can't control? Now you can't mm. control bot. So, I thought you said the algorithm. Oh, you can't. Oh, the algorithm, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Focusing on that, and I get that. And that goes back to our conversation in that last episode. Yeah. All right. Now, Jeez, with that being said, I want to switch up the flow a little bit and get into 